So uh, just as far as introductions for anybody that is uh, jumping on, so this is again our Monday Microsoft Community Office Hours, and it's the Ask Me Anything format. So we're gonna sit here and chat until somebody has some questions. Uh, we're streaming in a couple different places, which is why for those that will inevitably ask, uh, oh, and there's Mike, let me add Mike. Uh, so we'll have a few people jumping in on the panel uh, throughout the, the next hour, but we're uh, basically here just to answer any questions that you might have about Microsoft products and services. And uh, in the absence of questions, we'll find a way to fill our dime. So uh, being the latest to this, uh, Mike, you're on the spot. You have to answer the first five <laughs> questions. So... <laughs> Uh, How did I get that? <laughs> just oh. lucky, I guess. <laughs> uh, so, all right. Uh, so we're all set up. We're live streaming, uh, as streaming, as I said, in, in a couple different places. Um, uh, Faisal says hello to everybody. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So if you've got questions, we're live streaming in a couple places on Facebook. So go ahead and type out your question and we'll do our best to answer those. And I'll also be going through questions that have just been posted in the normal dialogue over on the Office 365 community on Facebook. And the recordings for these, if you've not seen one of these, uh, so I am capturing both the morning and night, jamming them together into uh, action-packed two-hour segments and uh, and post it out on the blog out on my blog, and I'll provide a couple links here once we get going um, for the last couple episodes. But you can go to buckleyplanet.com and you can find. And I've listed out with links timestamps to each of the discussion areas, like the fifteen to twenty different topics each week that we that we cover. Uh, we do duplicate some topics because we're doing this morning session. We do one in the evening. It'll be six p.m. Pacific, so we could try and hit H Pacific, and this one's really for kind of the Americas and uh, uh, Europe and, and Africa, Middle East and Africa. So EMEA, EMEA. All right. So with that, uh, and and Mike, how was your weekend? Anything exciting going on? No, actually, you know, it was it was nice out here. Actually, I mean, we're we're so used to this 40, 30, 40 degrees, and we finally got a day that was like you know fifty five, sixty. So to that, to us, that's like summer, like shorts and t-shirts. Yeah, we've uh, had we've had some similar where it's been nice, but not like Hal's Hal yeah. was bragging about ninety degree weather. So no, no, no not even. Close. It's only spring. It's only spring. We've got another <laughs> at ninety six. We've got another twenty degrees to go yet. Got to work yourself up. Work your way yeah. up to that. So. <laughs> I did get a I, over between. Oh, I'm sorry. 100, 110, 120 between. When we get into uh, mid June, yeah, I did get a question though over the oh, weekend. Okay, so and I got to ask an office person, right? Because I don't know the official answer to this. I mean, I looked it up, obviously, um, but I, I'd like to hear it from you know the office folks. Uh, what is the deal with OneNote 2016 and the OneNote Windows 10 app? That's the official because question. What is the deal with? What is it? What's well, the, the deal question, with the, it's a the, Seinfeldian question? And I got to tell you, that was how it was phrased to me because, yeah. like, well, you're telling me that you want to share a notebook, but you're sharing it up in OneNote 2016, and that's supposed to be going away. So why are you doing this? And I'm like, uh, it's not going away. Well, they said it was going away. <laughs> yes, so what, it's what's, not. what's the deal? Yeah. It's not. It was. It's not, but it's not now. <laughs> No, okay. they uh, they had this wonderful vision that, that they were going to take uh, take one out and they were going to make it into a store app. And the store app was going to get all the improvements and the embellishments and the new features. And my cat just knocked something off the table on the floor. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that was the way things were going. And then they decided, no, well, that's probably not it, what we need to do. So now, now it is the uh, the desktop the main office, 2016, 19, whatever, 365, whatever you want to call it, that is, uh, is, is, is being embellished and improved and so forth. And the, and the store app is uh, basically just along the... So they're going to continue who, to develop both? 
Yeah, they're going to develop both of them because they have an audience for both of them. So, the so, in 2016, so that's where most of the, at least it is for the moment. That's where all the effort's being put. So two, I have two comments on this. So Mike, first off, can't a trillion dollar software company change its mind? <laughs> Come on. This is 2020, you know. Uh, no, the other thing is that I mean, I'm not surprised by the, the decision. Uh -oh. I think there was some pushback. Uh, on the 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 app and some of its capabilities, there were some cool features. Yeah. Uh, in that, but the but it's been you know historically Microsoft has always done kind of competing overlapping uh, overlapping products and you know like which wins in the market and so while there's some short term confusion around it, I mean we're we're uh, it's like when people get upset about uh, a, you know a name change like the Office 365. To Microsoft yeah, 365, yeah, I was bring that up. you know, and I, and I look at it and I'm just like, you know, uh, yeah, uh, uh, by the 20th time when that happens, why are you getting angry about something you know is going to happen again? You know? This is coming. This is coming from a task worker, right? This is a person who doesn't, you know, doesn't know the ins and outs of of Microsoft or anything like that. They're just used to using Office, and yeah, and I shared the, a notebook with them, and they got confused because it came through and said it was a off and have one note 2016 notebook and they're like i don't have that i'm like yeah you do it's just a notebook um and one note for windows 10 will open that up yeah but i get where they were coming from you yeah. know and, and the conversation actually evolved from a user group meeting and the user group uh was talking about how they were going to post their videos on the web and they were sharing this window notebook which kind of gave them all the links to these videos that they had but they were like, well, how come we're not using, you know, uh, the Azure or the uh, Office 365 video service? And I said, are you talking about stream? And they said, yeah, how, well, we just put them in SharePoint, but why, why can't we use stream? And I said, I'm not really sure if that's actually going to be, I mean, it's kind of expensive, right, to, to, to put videos up there, number one. But number two, you can't really... It's kind of like the SharePoint limitation. You can't really share those outside to the external world and just have anybody connect to them. Is that right? No, correct. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. So yeah, anonymous access is not yet. Yeah, they were looking. They were looking for a solution to host their videos, and they were like, "Well, we just you know we're a Microsoft group, so we'll just put them up there." Which is, if you have a tenant and have people in there on the guest network and give them access so they can consume that, then it's. You know that that's possible, so you can go and do that. What it is not a stream is not a, you know a YouTube, a Microsoft version of YouTube. Yeah, that's what they were. They thought. I mean that that was their inclination. Is like, hey, I mean, why should we be using Google service when we can use Microsoft service? Right. Um, so on. So on. So. Yeah. Those were my questions over the weekend during a user group meeting. Let's just hey, let me ask. So so it, it so it's good to hear. As I've not looked at it in a while, to look at if somebody sends the OneNote web app they go and build something out in there uh and send that link and if somebody doesn't have that installed then it opens up in their regular OneNote client they have access to that do they get an error message or does it open well when they when i sent a one that came from 2016 to the native windows 10 app it came and said she said a pop-up dialog came up and said this note was from the windows 10 or uh from the um like, uh, the, no, it wasn't for it was from 2016, and you have the uh, Microsoft a uh, uh, OneNote from Microsoft Store installed. Would you like to install OneNote 2016? So it differentiated between the two just on a shared notebook. There might be a, maybe maybe I had something in that notebook that isn't available in I, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, it would be great if uh, well one. I mean, that's something to go and, and look at uh, to make sure that you know, it, it works both ways. If you have one installed yeah. and, uh, and, and what the reaction is, it, it would be, I mean, I would hope that Microsoft, if they've decided to leave both in place, that they've handled that and make it, you know, make it be able to open it compatible. Way. Yeah. Right. And I wish they would do that. It just, it made me think of one of my biggest complaints about using Microsoft Teams is, is the, you know, all of the pop-ups that, that happen is like, do you want to open this? Is it, are you sure? You, like I've got teams open, I'm in the space and you're still prompting me to, yeah. 
you know, do, where do you want to open it? Like, can't I somewhere go and add my default experience, open it this way every time, you know, profile, yeah. some kind of profile setting. Yeah. It's anyway, I get aggravated just because this morning I got another invitation to join another Microsoft team. And this just happened like 10 minutes ago and I click on it and sure enough, I have to change tenants. I have to, I have to log out. Then I have to log in with a different ID. And then I have to go in and I have four tenants to choose from. I have to make sure I'm in the right tenant in order for it doesn't pop up and tell me, oh, you need permission to join this team, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so, that's a huge complaint from, from people in the yeah. community that because it'll, if you are open a meeting and you're in a different tenant, you've got guest access to that and that it reduces functionality. Like you don't have the chat capability. It's like, well, why didn't you don't have automatically them. open me in the right environment so that I have that capability for that meeting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's aggravating. And I was on a call last week, late last week, um, uh, where it was the, it was a, um, a, uh, a team's call, an actual, what they're, how to present, how to do live events in teams. It was done by, um, Swedish, uh, Microsoft MVPs. I'm not really sure. It was across the pond somewhere. And our CPMs had distributed the link uh, that we could join it. So they had like 240 some people on it. They were afraid they were going to get the 250 limit. Uh, but then somebody on the call said, oh, they raised it to 300 now. I didn't know that. They said, oh yeah, now the limit's 300. Okay, maybe that's true. I don't know. But there was a lot of conversation and they were saying, Oh no, that limitation about changing tenants is no longer exists. Unless it depends on where the invitation was sent from. If the invitation was sent from a specific tenant, then yes, you have to be part of that tenant. If it was sent as an external, from an external source, then you don't. And I'm like, that's too confusing for people. It's <laughs> interesting. All right. So we've got, uh, quite a few people watching on the on uh, one of the two live streams. So uh, is that one showing? So about twelve and one and eighteen and the other one. Uh, if you'd like to ask a question, uh, we'll do our best to uh, uh, to respond. And ask uh, away. so ask away. Maybe we can get Christian to actually you know pick up a guitar and play for us. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, Maybe a uke. You got a ukulele? Come on. I have a ukulele. I, I, you know, I did. So what was it? Fifth grade, sixth grade. I, for a year, I took banjo lessons. Ooh, Steve Martin. He's awesome. It's because I was a huge Steve Martin fan as a kid. So cheers. Yeah. yeah I had the old effect. <laughs> this goes back to the so late seventies. We had a bunch of the, uh, so we had the eight track player. My dad's Lincoln had uh, an eight track and we had a little portable eight track player, but I had uh, like comedy is not pretty and some of those classic albums. So my dad was a big fan of Steve Martin, George Carlin, um, Richard Pryor, just a bunch of those. So we had uh, all of those eight tracks. Uh, Seven things you can't say on TV or in a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Oh, and there it is. And Tony wins the award for the first one today to ask the question of why we're using zoom instead of using teams and Tony Bravo. Yeah. So, sorry, not, not making fun of you, Tony. It's just, uh, no, the, the, the reason why is because we're live streaming on Facebook and you can't do that with teams. Uh, and if your response is yes, you can live stream with teams. The answer is no, you cannot live stream with teams on social networks. So it would take a third party solution. We're just cutting out the middleman. Go with one solution. We're doing that. Uh, yeah. And Sean, I'm adding you. Stop your whining. Stop your wiggling. Uh, Sean is joining the panel here. Uh, but anyway, that's why we're using Zoom. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, the unfortunate side effect of, uh, of Zoom on Teams is it says Zoom at broadcast there uh, in, in the, re the live stream. If we, uh, I believe if we uh, live stream to uh, YouTube, then it does not have that blazing across the screen. But yeah, anyway. All right. So. Uh, oh, look who showed up. Oh, on. There he is. Good morning, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> A little behind the eight ball today. Yeah. The show can start now. Yeah. <laughs> start? Oh, my. <laughs> 
We've already gotten, uh, we've already gotten two questions. Yeah, just deploy it. <laughs> that's right. There. There's no way that's, to test. That's awesome. Uh, can't be. Is that, a vendor, is that a vendor shirt? No. <laughs> no. Okay. It not. No, it's not. But it should be. I'm just yeah. What's what's your vendor of choice for these uh, fun T-shirts? Do you just pick them up randomly from here and there? Um, actually, the company that I tend to go to the most often is called Core T. It's um, over in the UK. C O R E T. Core. No. Um, let me pull up their link. And while you're we're pulling that up, let me uh, I'll post out uh, the link uh, I mentioned earlier. So with the, so last week's recording, as well as all the topics covered, and you can actually search in the blog and you'll find this because last week this is episode six today. Um, but let me paste it there and paste it one other location. Um, but you can go check out some of what we're covering in these discussions and jump to the conversation, or you could watch the entire two hours. That's, that's always fun as well. As yeah. We for the, uh, ourselves. for the gluttons for punishment out there. <laughs> Core T. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. They tend to have <clears throat> most of the t-shirts I get are from there, but, uh, I get the occasional one from, um, a number of other places too. Um, Think Geek has some good yeah. ones. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. As I mentioned, I'm, I'm still waiting for that shipment from the $6 shirt. So you should see some fun ones coming up. <laughs> Did that uh, get waylaid, Christian? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, I got the email alert saying it. Uh, remember, I told you like they're, they never did the follow up email. So I kind of freaked out. Like, where, where are my funny and interesting t shirts? You know, it's, it's my uh, personality crutch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as you know, Sean. <laughs> uh, yeah. So they're coming, uh, coming direct to you by way of, uh, I think they're Vladivostok, from, Russia or something. No, they're coming from Florida. Florida. Oh. That isn't that far. Uh, I ordered, I ordered shirts and uh, they're just screen printed shirts for uh, my wife for Mother's Day. And they're coming all the way from China for some reason. They don't tell you that. Seven to day, seven to ten days shipping, and then all of a sudden I get a tracking thing saying, "Oh, it's going to be twenty six days to come from China." Yeah. No oh, way. <laughs> Here's the GPS tag for the boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. So, uh, any any product questions? Anything you guys have run into in the last week? Any other questions that came up? We had the one from from Mike. Only you four said Mike, go, but Mike only only the four. To, uh, actually, Sean now has to fill in the other four. Yeah. There you go. Whoever's last has to bring up the question. Uh, no, I was going to go take a look and see if there were any questions that had been asked out on the Office three sixty five community had one come up that was uh, addressed by one of the relatively newer capabilities of document libraries and lists. It was um, someone had a data field in a document library and it was not showing up correctly. The, the data was numeric. They wanted a simple straight integer, no modifying things like periods or commas or anything like that. Um, so we fell back to a JSON formatter uh, for the column field and that took care of it. But um, it seemed like a uh, <laughs> dark magic at the time. And thanks to Mark Anderson too for uh, passing along a, a nice reference. I was looking for that online because anybody who's done, have any of you guys done uh, development, uh, C-sharp-like development uh, with string formatters? Anyone? No. No. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, when you go to format a numeric, something like um, that, you can pass along a uh, specially crafted 
text, bit of text as a, uh, a formatter for the string. And I was looking for that for these JSON formatters, which the um, Office 365 uh, lists and libraries the, in SharePoint have been set up to accept. And Microsoft has a decent reference for that. Um, but unfortunately, it wasn't, they, they include all of the esoteric stuff, like here's how to conditionally format it in different colors or add graphics to the front of it. And I'm like, no, I just, I just want to format the number. And Mark Anderson finally pointed me to uh, what I wanted and was looking for. And it was, it saved the day. So I'm going to pull that link up because that was very helpful. I do have Thank a question. You. Yeah. Uh, about office in general. I don't mean to cut you off, Sean. Do you have oh, no, no please. No, cut him off. <laughs> <laughs> like I was saying before, I mean, I use, I use OneNote a lot. And it's because I used to use Evernote and obviously you know, switched over to OneNote. Um, but the question I have is around the theming, right? So everybody's on this dark theme kick. And I know that uh, 365 finally came out with the ability to do the dark theme maybe like a year ago, year and a half ago, something like that. And everybody was like, yay, this is cool. The thing is, is that whenever you copy and paste into OneNote and you're using the dark theme, all of your text is blacked out. So you have to actually go in and tell it to change the font to white. It uses it like a paper. I mean, it's like it's like you're drawing on black paper. Yeah. So they just they change the color of the background rather than change the exactly overall exactly. And they don't change. It's not actually a theme change, you know, or a UI change like Word. Because if you go into Word and you're in dark theme, if you type on the paper, okay, it comes through the correct way. Right. But OneNote doesn't do that, and I don't I don't understand it. And if you change, if you turn dark mode off on OneNote takes an offer all of the office apps. I mean, you can't do it individually. Hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm not understanding the thinking behind that, but that's just me. Yeah, uh, I mean, one, I would say that uh, I, I would go in, have to investigate, see if there's discussion out on the, uh, the related um, product team area uh, out on the tech community, see if there's anything out on user voice. You probably do a little investigation. I can't, Imagine that something like that is gone unnoticed and unlogged by others. Um, well, I, I did see it. I did see it on the uh, in MS Tech community, but the response was to turn off dark mode. Is this the desktop or the Windows 10 app? Uh, this oh. is 2016. It's I like when you say, "Doctor, it hurts when I do this." Well, it's yeah. like, then don't do this. You know. <laughs> Well, I try to find that interesting because I've got 2016. I'm running it in dark mode, and I just tried typing some plain old black text into Notepad, copied it and pasted it, and it came out white. You see, and that's what I don't understand is that, I mean, I do it from a, from a web page, from, oh. you know, something that may have formatting in it. Are okay. you pasting it with the formatting, or are you pasting it just as text? That makes a difference. Okay. And that, that I haven't checked. I haven't tried. I, I can try that. Yeah, if you right click when you want to paste something and just instead of doing yep. a control D, do a right click to paste and you can paste with Take source it right off formatting. The page now. Yeah. You can right. paste it with with uh, mixed formatting or you can paste it as plain text and pasting yeah. So if I do a, yeah, if I do a merge formatting, okay, then it comes across. If I just do use source formatting, then yes, it turns yeah. all black. So you are right. But still, I think that's I think that's kind of a I don't know. It, it doesn't work as well, easy as it should. Yeah, from that standpoint, there's a lot of cases where pasting into Microsoft Word. In my case, because I uh, I use Word when I write my blog articles, um, and I do a lot of cut and pasting for things like uh, URLs or 
uh, tables or things like that, something that I'm taking out of some other article that I'm going to include in mine. And uh, just a simple control V to paste always is paste with source formatting or paste with merge formatting. Usually it's paste with the source. And what I always right. do is just paste the text without any right. the source, Luke. So the, the, right. the question is, why do you have to have, in that regard, why do you have to have the complex paste as the default rather than the simple paste? And then you go select if you want the picture or you want to keep source or whatever. You see, that's 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 my issue on the deal. Well, and hell, I'll ask this is that, I mean, I use the web clipper a lot because I'll be on a web page and I'll just say, you know, clip the one note. And when I do that, you have no choice of how it's pasted. Yeah. It's pasted. Mm-hmm. And it comes through as dark. Yeah. So it defaults to that. Yeah. They railroad, they railroad you. <laughs> yeah, t- Tony makes a comment, and I, I, I agree with this. Uh, I, I don't have any, Tony, I'm sorry, I don't have any uh, additional information. I don't have any, uh, make sure that, make sure that if, uh, if you've got any live streams, I'm getting a little feedback here. Um, make sure any other pages are muted. Um, but Tony mentions that uh, something that bothers him in OneNote is you can't triple click like you can on Word and select a word or a sentence to edit or copy paste or, or move things around. Uh, and, and so I know that, you know, from a couple of the calls that I've been on, I mean, there, there's a move to uh, have the consistent user experiences across those writing surfaces and some of that capability. I don't know specifically about this feature, but again, Tony, I mean, this is something I would suggest go in and check it out in user voice. If there's not already something in there, to post it because I mean, and then share that link out like, Hey, I just uh, posted this in user voice, this request for this feature that we have similar editing capability in OneNote as we do in word and then outline kind of what that is and get other people to vote it up. And, and you only need five, 10 people voting it up for Microsoft to go on there and respond. So whether it's in the roadmap or not, don't know. Um, but I agree with you. Yeah, I, I mean, I live and breathe OneNote. I work in it every single day. Um, everything I write, it, it's there. Even if I, I'll usually go and dump content that I've written in OneNote into Word to do other formatting and just send it out as a, as a doc or to create a PDF. So, Christian, I just dropped, uh, not to curtail your uh, bit there, but I just dropped that link for the column formatting operators into the zoom chat that's a little gold mine so thank you so much mark anderson yeah let me put uh, uh, as i'm fond of showing him in prison anderson that's right in my uh so I'm posting that link in the multiple live streams. Coolio. Excellent. All right. Uh, any other questions? Oh, somebody, this, I see this conversation a lot, that people asking, and it was posted yesterday in the 365 community. Can anybody tell me how to use a conference video call with nine people on a screen at the same time? Um, I don't know if there's any update on what's happening with teams they are expanding that it should it's forthcoming we're all waiting yeah it's staging out but uh i don't know anything other than that yeah so it's currently being rolled out i don't know if it's currently i can't speak to that specifically but let me go to roadmap.office.com here. And while Sean's looking that up, again, anybody watching on one of the live stream feeds, if you have product questions, uh, feel free to ask and we'll do our best to, uh, to answer those. I'm looking up. Any other questions? Uh, 
Hal or, or Mike, anything that else that you've run into? All right, so let's see here. Microsoft Teams multi-window chat uh, is in that's development. Different. That's different. That's different? Yeah, that's the ability to pop out chats in a multi-window. Oh, have that gotcha. Going, which is, you know, uh, exciting as well. Can't wait for that. Gotcha. Let me refine my search here. Uh, here, here's a kind of a generic question. How is, uh, how is this whole home quarantine period? Has it changed? I mean, because we all do a ton of stuff online, working online anyway. Is there been anything that's changed in the way that uh, you've worked now that the rest of the world is also working from home? Has it impacted kind of your routines, the tools you use, how you're consuming information, collaborating with others? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, Sorry. I, yeah, I apologize. I had to switch switch my microphone. I can you am I still good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can hear your mic. Good. Um, yeah, because what I found is you know I've been working in from home for you know a very long time, and I found that everything is going virtual. In terms of, you used to have to drive places, go do things, or go to user groups and things like that. I'm having problems with scheduling. In terms of, you know, people are just, oh, we can just jump on a Zoom. And people that have never used Zoom before, they always wanted in-person stuff. Um, it's just, to me, it's, it's getting a little bit more difficult to manage. And you now have the ability to, uh, you know, join things that you could not get to before. I, there's no way that I could join a user group from across the pond in, you know, Sweden or in the Netherlands and sit there for an hour and a half and watch someone talk about, you know, uh, PowerShell and, and Windows Terminal and all that kind of fun stuff. So it's consume, consuming more of my time. I'm having, a, uh, I'm, 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 ha I'm having a little difficulty organizing and maintaining the level of, you know, time. I'm spending, I start out really early in the morning and I'm not getting done until late at night when I used to have some kind of a cutoff there and a little bit, a little bit more time to myself. But, uh, that's why it's so important. People, a lot of people have talked about setting barriers, working hours. You know, you've got to turn that off. I, I, I've commented, you know, multiple weeks here that it's a blessing that I have my dogs that will come and demand my attention. And now that I even mention this, so they'll, I think their ears will perk up and they'll come over thinking, oh, are we going for a, I can't even say the word, a W. <laughs> yeah. Just Did we sounds say like awk. Did we say it? Everybody at once. So they yeah. can hear it. I, they, I think they're oh. recognizing that letter now. Uh, and so bone, <laughs> bone, bone, treat. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's they, hilarious. They're, they're busy. They're seeing other people walking their, their dogs uh, out the front window. So they're barking. Just up demanding there. their attention. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but that has, you know, breaks up my day go, going out and doing that. And, and, uh, um, but it's, but I think to your point, there's a, so I've had, uh, so I use uh, Calendly is one way that I, I try to manage that. There's the things that I schedule on my own with other people reaching out is I use Calendly. Um, so we're not having to do that back and forth to figure out a time that works like it's baked in. It knows my schedule. Right. So whatever works on, on your calendar and I've had some people that have said, well, why don't you use Find Time? Well, Find Time or Microsoft and Calendly are very different applications. They do different yeah. things. And Find Time, like most things Microsoft does, works fantastic for the enterprise, not so great when working with people uh, outside of that. Um, but like I just sent out a, 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 an email to somebody and said, hey, look, I've got these two days these different times, pick one. This is just one person that I, I know that I'm working with. I could have just sent the find time and it would have just automatically scheduled that meeting when you know the days and have some suggested times and are looking for like a voting system of five or six people. 
where you basically go and say, look, I'm available at all eight times that you've suggested. Somebody else says, I'm only available at these two. Well, then you can uh, you know, make a decision on whether you move forward or not. If not enough people can get together, you don't have that quorum. Yeah. Uh, but for when you're doing that one-on-one -on -one and you don't have a date uh, set, uh, that's why I, I pay for Calendly, uh, Calendly, uh, and uh, it's just a fantastic tool for people outside of the organization. Yeah. Um, hey, Christian, I found that uh, information. So Microsoft Teams increase in the number of simultaneous videos in Teams meetings. That's in development. Um, Worldwide standard multi-tenant general availability for education, Microsoft Teams, Office 365, uh, May 2020. Yeah, yeah. so they, they said H1. They, they said, you know, and, and I think I, I, the only caveat there is they had set that before all of this quarantine stuff um, is going on. So uh, if they're able to hold to that, great. But obviously, they've shifted a lot of resources over to the explosion of usage and, and they've had to prioritize a lot of those things. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see some features like that slip, you know, a, a little bit, but um, to, Tony makes a great comment too. And I, I think this is worth talking on this topic of the, of having the number of people on there. Like we just had a family every Sunday evening, family members from across five or six States, um, so my, my wife's siblings and her parents who are living with us right now and, and some cousins and, you know, uh, they're spread out and we use Zoom. And so to have everybody's face up there in these little windows is yeah. fantastic for that. Um, but it, it, when is it, uh, you know, enough, enough? Is it, you know, he, as Tony says, three by three, four by four, five by five, how big of a grid, you know, it, it's going to be. <laughs> how many Brady punches do you need? Right. And from a, yeah. from a family situation, I don't, you know, it, it's, that's really cool being able to see everybody. But when you get into a larger group meeting and you have 30 some people and 30 little screens with all kinds of different movement and I'm sorry, these crazy backgrounds, these people are adding to their stuff, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's. It wears you out. Yeah, my wife has commented that it wears you out. Um, and actually, I believe she found a piece of research or was mentioned on NPR on a something we were listening to the other night um, that it is, you know, visually and mentally taxing to try and keep track of all of this. So too much going on at once. Yeah, and of course we use that phrase. I'm just thinking some people are thinking, well, these four guys are visually taxing. <laughs> Any one of us on a given day, I think <laughs> would yeah. fit the bill, but, no, but Oh, but I, yeah, but I agree with you there. I saw there's a, um, in fact, I think from zoom had an update or something as they were working on there are many security issues and they had, they were used. There's some piece that had like 30 people on there. And I think, well, you know, what do you look at? What do you focus on? What do you concentrate on? Right. It, it's, uh, I think it's just, it's too much. I like the idea of what you can do with, uh, with the team's uh, live events where it has that, you know, a little more of a curated experience. Um, I would love to be able to see that even whether it's, you know, four or nine, and I think nine is kind of the cap there. Maybe they're looking at doing 12. I'm not sure whatever Microsoft lands on, there, but being able to then pin, you know, if you've got 50 or a hundred people or a thousand people that are watching, um, but be able to, I guess for a, a live meeting, you'd only have 15 uh, presenters, co-presenters. Um, so that's a locked numbers. That's how as many people you can have on screen, but in a, uh, a team's meeting, if it's 12, for example, if you've got a hundred other people that are on there, but could pin those 12 that are presenting, and then somebody could curate and, and you know and, and say, hey, we're going to lock these nine, but these other three are whoever is asking questions and currently talking. Uh, aside from those eyes, that would be fantastic capability. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I do know there are some folks that are like uh, when when at first this whole thing started happening and folks had to switch over, and people that haven't used conferencing 
as much as others have, you know, being using Zoom or using Teams or using GoToMeeting or whatever. Um, their biggest thing was like, oh, Zoom, you can see everybody. This is so cool. <laughs> well, you know, and then, they'd, then, yeah, then they'd start complaining, well, Teams can't do that. You know, GoToMeeting, you can't do that. And now it's gotten to the point where they're like, yeah, yeah, it was cool. Now it's just aggravating. <laughs> Anybody yeah. remember uh, Blipvert from Max Headroom? Yeah. Way back when? Yeah. So much advertising compressed into so little space that it was causing people's heads to explode. <laughs> yeah. uh, you just, I, I need a, uh, a Max Headroom background. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> So I'm and in fact, I'll find the link to the segment on the blip for That's a copyright violation. So uh, just something really quick here for all four of us. Uh, Seb uh, really likes the hand waving and the motion. So let's, uh, let's give him kind of an in-depth. It's like, let's all just you know, talk with our hands, you know. That's, thank you. Thank you, Seb, for bringing this up. So I'm stupid. I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. uh, uh, remember, uh, Hal and I were pontificating on access and access services and whatnot. Yes. Well, I did a little more, uh, looking and boy, was I off the mark. So I just posted a link in, um, that's shocking. The chat. <laughs> yeah. Me being off the mark. Imagine that. Um, right. I will. but, uh, access, they're still, Microsoft is still touting it. You know, they've got the latest services on on offer out there um, got a bright shiny link for it so <laughs> it's not going away anytime soon yeah hey I, I always say if they create a new icon for it they're not getting rid of it <laughs> yeah no, it's, <laughs> fair point well as we talked fair about point, last Mike. time for those that that missed that you know, I, I did we talk about it last week or two weeks ago it was, was last it week or last week uh, you know, the access services, and I still say it's, you know, especially for, while there's fewer and fewer of them in the world, um, but folks that move over from the Lotus Notes experience over Ooh, the Microsoft world. world oh, Lotus I know. Notes, the plague. <laughs> yeah, but they, they move over from that, and but needing to have a small, you know, a database-driven, you know, application-building tool, um, access services uh, with combined with SharePoint so this was back in what, what was that? 2010 to 2012, somewhere back then it was, that was an, an alternative to, to, yeah. for those Lotus Notes folks. The only reason I'm aware of that is, uh, you know, pr my previous company, Acceler, um, we have, and I think the product is still out there, a, a Lotus Notes uh, uh, migration solution. Uh, and uh, there's still for the folks that are out there, you know, we were dealing with that all the time. Like, well, what do I do with all of these database driven applications we built in Lotus notes? There is no migration path for those, but you need to provide similar functionality so that they can go in there and re-architect those solutions. Now, of course you've got power apps and power flow and a bunch of other things. And with SharePoint and with the lists, the, all the things that can be done today, it's very, very different, but I'd agree. I'm sure there's plenty of people. There's people still using COBOL and access is slightly newer than that. You know, notes is still a thing. It, it, I hear that. Yeah, it is. It's still a thing. I have a company here in, you know, in my state that still uses notes. Ugh. It, it just gives me the willies every time I hear it. <laughs> well, I've got a, a question here from, uh, um, is it Make? Sorry if I, uh, Mike, Make, uh, Schmidt. So saying, uh, since the name changed to Microsoft 365, Teams should be made usable for families. Why is this not yet possible? So what needs to happen for Teams to be? Isn't it free? I mean, you can use it for families. Yeah, but it's, okay. still, but it's still an enterprise. It is. Yeah. It is, but I mean, you could tie it to, I mean, when you sign up for Teams, you don't have to give it, you have to have a Microsoft account. That doesn't mean you need a, you need a work or what do they call it? A work or school account? Work or school account. Microsoft Microsoft. ID. Yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah, a work or school account. You can't use just a Microsoft ID? Um, you can use just a Microsoft ID. Okay, so 
and that that to me i mean that's, like my, my son has a microsoft id just for his xbox right so it's not a work or school account so you don't need that that background 365 in order for it to function i guess i guess it's not as easy as other products but you can still do it yeah i, I again I, I agree and you've got the free version that that's out there um if you have uh like i i've uh to you talking with my family members about you know everybody that's on my account they have logins they they're using uh, the web-based tools and some downloaded you know uh, local versions of the productivity suite and, and so it'd be easy for them to go in and use teams but only a couple of them yeah and, uh, you know one of, one of my sons and my daughter are using it occasionally but the others are just they just don't need it yeah. Skype? I don't know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we we got a notice. We got a, and that's kind of funny because we got a notification. One of the largest get togethers that they're going to have. They got like 600, 700 some people um, that one, uh, one of the CPM sent out an invite for or sent out a thing for um, is going to be done on Skype. It's a conference, an all day conference instead of Teams. Skype consumer? Like, and I, and I came back and I was like, does this really say Skype? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> is that Skype consumer or Skype for business? I just said Skype. I mean, oh. it, didn't, it, you, it said the speakers because it was a call for speakers for it. Hmm. And it said that, you know, if you want to, you, this is the, you need to make sure that you can, uh, you'll be on Skype. And I'm like, wow, okay. Skype what consumer is, the, is still alive and doing okay. Oh yeah. Well, they just did the, uh, in, in response to the Zoom, they just did released the uh, Skype meet now. Did they? I don't, I don't know. I don't keep up with Skype. Yeah, hang on. Yeah, so I actually included that in uh, the productivity tips webinar with uh, Tom Duff. That was uh, one of my items. It was, so they've simplified that so you, you don't even have to download the uh, Skype app, you could just use it entirely through the browser. And, uh, and so for you, if you're hosting that Skype meeting and you have a profile and it'll open up in the Skype consumer, you know, uh, experience, um, but then you can send out that shareable link to anybody and just by email invite and they can join you on the web. Okay. But is it a one-on-one -on -one or is it? No, nope, it's a group. It's a group. It's a group thing. Correct. Interesting. Very interesting. I saw, I actually saw it and related to that, I saw a tweet over the weekend. I, I'd have to hunt it down. But somebody said that if you're in Google chat and you type in, hey, do you want to Zoom or would you like to Zoom? Google automatically pops up a bubble with a little camera in it. It looks like a Zoom, the Zoom icon. Hmm. If you click on it, it opens Google Hangout. <laughs> interesting. So it's taking the term Zoom and it's popping up a bubble Co-opting the term. Its own. They don't call it Hangouts now. They call it, they call it something else, aren't they? Calling it, I don't remember. They came up with some name because they got rid of Hangouts, but it pops up there. They got rid of Hangouts? I mean, I, it's still there? Yeah, but they're going to rename it. They said it was a, there was a new name coming for it. I don't know what – I don't remember what it is. Converse? So if, if they're trying to make Zoom generic description for a web meeting, how soon are we going to see, like, oh, go over to Bing to Google something? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want that on a shirt. <laughs> oh, speaking of explosions, I did post the uh, Blipverts link, the YouTube link. Oh, okay. The uh, Blipverts from the Max Headroom television series years back so you can watch that and see the power of advertising quite literally cause someone to explode yeah and uh, tony mentions that google hangouts is not google meet so two different products so yeah oh, that's it. i'm sorry that's it google meet so when you click on that zoom it brings you to google meet that's right yeah oh and seb says the the skype meet now is limited to 50 people yeah, oh. which is uh, it, right, right, which is more than enough. It's meant to be a consumer-based solution. Most consumers are not. It's you're not going to go run a conference off of Skype Meet now. But that's what I'm interested to hear about that conference to understand. Like, uh, yeah. you know, so they must be using uh, Skype for Business 
to get a greater capacity? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up teams. I, of course, I have to find the right tenant. And then once I do that, I'll, I'll find out what that link is. It's like playing whack-a-mole. <laughs> uh, any other questions from uh, those that are watching in the watch party or out live streaming on Facebook? We've got uh, nine more minutes here uh, for this session. We'll be back, of course, again tonight at uh, 6 p.m. Again. Pacific. We'll be doing it all again because we're gluttons for punishment. No, we're, it's uh, – Yes, so are you. The questions. <laughs> Feel free to continue posting here. I will be checking uh, these the live stream pages, um, or you can uh, email me or message me through whatever channel out on Twitter as well. If you've got questions, find me somehow. LinkedIn, Twitter, send them. Santa I'm Christian he watches that list and checks it twice. You're on the naughty list, Sean. <laughs> he always has been. I would have expected nothing <laughs> yeah. less. And and uh, Facebook just announced Messenger Rooms. I've been seeing some messaging around that. I've just uh, chosen Messenger to... Rooms. Oh wow! Hmm. Is that the answer to get a room? <laughs> yes, I think so. Yeah, I love that. So uh, next week, we're going to be moving all of this to our SharePoint Spaces VR environment. <laughs> Reach out and oh, touch someone. How could, I, how could I not know this? I apologize. It's the Virtual Azure Community Day. So it's at azureday.community. When is that? Is it today? Thursday, oh, Thursday, March 31st. It's the Virtual Azure Community Day. March 31st. March 31st. That's what it says, March 31st, 2020. It's already, oh, oh yeah, it's already That's over it. with. Yeah, there's so they were asking for, for call. Old news. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were, but I just want to tell you, this is what they said for the session. Oh. So I'm going to post this. That's what they wanted. And it said, you have to stream live from home through Skype. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know what? I, I might reach out to uh, Magnus uh, Martinson, who is one of the organizers of that event, and see what they had been recommending and what some of the capacity. I'll do a little research to try and find that. And it's weird because she posted this on 421 for the call for proposals or a call for papers. And they had the event on the 31st. So that was like really fast. Wow. Mm. Odd. Yeah, I don't know if uh, so. A couple of the so I helped um, facilitate here for Utah for our version of that that event. But I didn't participate. I was traveling. It was uh, a global Azure boot camp, right? The global, correct. Global Azure. Yeah, you know, the last couple of years we've been yeah we've been on that bandwagon as well. I'll have to ask somebody in the user group whether they've uh, you know what they used. So do a little research there. Excellent. You know, private comment. Somebody is uh, telling me to get a haircut. Thank you. <laughs> Hippie. Yeah, me and everyone else. <laughs> yeah, except hey. the people in this audience. <laughs> this panel. Freshly shorn this weekend. <laughs> uh now some some good questions, some good comments uh, this this week. So thanks everybody for participating. And I did share a link. I pasted it for the uh, Skype uh, meet now. Uh, go take a look at that uh, if you've not had a chance to do that. Yeah, there's always this this complaint with uh, Microsoft's uh, acquisition of Skype, and all the problems and the complaints that I had about the Skype for Business failures. Um, the Skype consumer product has been rock solid and my, my usage of that. So yeah. uh, I was a user of it and, and had, you know, credit in the bank there for, for years and used that. It was, it was one of those technologies. It was like Facebook messenger and Skype consumer where I had a crappy Wi-Fi connection. I think I was in the airport down um, uh, in the South Island of New Zealand and couldn't get email, could get anything else to go through, but Facebook messenger with their deal with the devil and Skype consumer came through solid. I was able to do voice calls 
on my phone through the Skype consumer app. And it was fantastic. So I was able to do my wi crappy Wi-Fi to landline. and uh, Savior of the day. Yeah. This is great. I had gotten a credit, uh, like a gift card. I had wanted something. And it was a $100 credit for Skype. And then it so sat there for years unused? It did. It sat there for years, but then I started to use it instead of my phone. So I was starting, I called landlines. And that's when you started, you know, you started to see that number go down really fast. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it, cool. the the same thing. But I think with, with all the global travel that I've done, I have my international phone, you know, uh, uh, international plan on my phone, and uh, you know, I use my uh, you know my data plan goes to just about everywhere I travel to, and it was in most countries that I've visited um, in the last decade. Um, I just stopped using it, so I had for years like eighty five dollars yeah. still in there it might be gone now i have to go take a look i know that they expired it if you didn't use it for right i remember getting the warning yeah yep use it or lose it yep all right Eddie, we got time for one more question if anybody has a question feel free to uh host it to one of the live stream pages Go through to see if I missed anything here. And uh, Himmelstein, hey, if you've got uh -oh. any questions. Yeah, I know. Here comes trouble. Hey, Jason. Uh, but feel free to post your question. Jason asked a question. I might ignore it. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, anything else exciting going on today for you gentlemen? Mm, no, nah, it's a beautiful day outside. Yeah. Aside from that, just a Monday. One question I do have for everybody. Is anybody taking vacations while you're dealing with this? Or if you work from home, obviously. But I mean, that's been one sticking point that I've had folks that I work with that are never haven't done this before. They're like, well, I, what, how am I supposed to take a vacation? Yeah, we've so. got uh, one planned for the family, but I doubt we will actually go through it. We typically go to Michigan um, during the summer, rent a place on a, one of the lakes up there. And uh, even though we've got plans and everything booked, I expect we're going to forego that this year. Yeah, we're, I, so my uh, youngest that just returned from Argentina, he and I are talking about doing a road trip out to visit my daughter in Minneapolis. And so I'm doing some investigation just to figure out, you know, uh, that our path, it's a, it's a, what is it, 18 and a half hour drive from Salt Lake to Minneapolis. Wow. And uh, so we want to make a couple stops. You can't drive through that part of the world and not visit Mount Rushmore. It's one of my favorite stops. Um, and I think what we'll also go, I took them when they were younger. We went to, uh, it was a devil's tower, which is where they, fought, mm. they filmed, uh, Close encounters. Close encounters. Yeah. and, uh, so those are two things that we're, we want to, uh, um, stop off and see again. Um, so it's about a 25, 26 hour drive, uh, that we'll be making with those stops. Hey, it'd be a nice road trip for you, you and, uh, we just yeah. want to make sure that everything's open. It's like, so I have to go and investigate and see if the, those parks are even open in those states. And what. Yeah, you come out to the Midwest, everything's open. I mean, literally, we're down to, we're down to 90, 95 cents a gallon on gas. We, you know, and it's Where are you, Mike? I'm in Wisconsin. Okay. So I'm in the, the, the freezing cold Midwest, but I mean, it's just – it's like we drove out yesterday and got ice cream and it's like, everything's open. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, Utah is, uh, is opening up rapidly. The state parks are all back open. And um, so I just, we're, we're, we're making some other checks, but making those, those plans. And then, you know, I, and I'm, I, I know gas stations are one of those essential things. So none of them are, are closed, but we're just figuring out our strategy and bringing masks and gloves for for when we have to stop and all that kind of fun stuff so yeah like uh that one thing i've noticed out with some of the hikes and the trails here that while the state parks might be open um all the bathrooms the public anything public like that is, is mm. closed 
And so that's, that's a concern doing a trip like that. Um, what facilities are going to be available. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm used to uh, taking the dogs for a walk and bagging everything. So that, maybe that's, <laughs> yeah. that's an option. Don't bring a there. lot of uh, Ziplocs with you, Christian. <laughs> uh, so I always tell it to my kids. I said, the one that says the world is a man's bathroom. So I, uh, yeah. and on yeah. that note, <laughs> <laughs> Bring an empty milk jug with you. Yeah, there you go. So thanks all for joining, and thanks to the panel. So Mike, Sean, and Hal, and uh, again, feel free to continue posting any questions. Uh, I'll be checking these feeds. We'll be back again at 6 p.m. Pacific uh, to hit our next, our Tuesday morning Asia Pacific uh, time frame. But uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, join us in the same bat cave, bat location. And we'll see, you, <laughs> see everybody there. Be good, everyone. Thanks a lot. Sounds like a plan. Bye. Bye. All right. Just uh, for those that uh, are, are just jumping in, I'm uh, just kicking off the live stream in a couple locations. Let me do the watch party. Start that going. And that one I have to mute. Yep. All right. And it's muted and we're going. And where's the primary feed? Come on. Refresh. There it is. Okay. Excellent. All right. It's just that easy. Excellent. And there's Sean. Let me add Sean. Mr. McDonough. Good evening. I was just telling Hal that uh, yeah, I wasted a, at least a couple hours today to try to uh, uh, set up OBS with Teams. And I saw it, your emails and invites yeah. and things. Yeah. No luck, huh? Not so No far. love. No, I think uh, I need to uh, pick the brains of, uh, of people that have figured this stuff out. Daryl Webster. Um, Daniel Glenn, a few others that have uh, done this kind of stuff and get some hop. of that secret sauce. Yeah, hop on the back of someone who's climbed the mountain already. Exactly. Um, but Nothing uh, wrong with that. No shame in that, Christian. Not no, at all. I have no problem with that. I was already uh, scanning the interwebs, the YouTubes, and uh, both of them. I scanned both. Wow, all at once? I know. Yeah. Did you hurt anything or pull well, I, anything? I, I spread myself. I, I paced myself. But the, <laughs> you uh, stressed your groin, did you? Yeah, that's right. Oh. <laughs> the, the, the interweb and, as well as both YouTubes. But, wow. It's a uh, lot of YouTube in action. Yeah, it was, it was pretty intense. So, yeah. Well, so, I'm glad that your tubes are activated. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that surgery called? It's the tubal... Whatever. Ligation. Ligation. <laughs> <laughs> Scares me that we both hit that on the same note, Hal. Yeah. At yeah. some point, I'm going to, you know, once, once stream has that anonymous access and we can have our, a, a more uh, controlled, uh, you know, YouTube-like experience, then I'll do the tube YouTube ligation. <laughs> Sever the tube. youtube ligation yes. Yeah. <laughs> Brand new uh, procedure created here. All right. Well, we've got, uh, let's see, do we, we've got a, a few people that are, are watching, and this isn't just the three of us that are sitting here. Well, I mean, we are right now just sitting around just chatting. And making yeah, I'm no longer playing Minecraft with my son and his friends. So. <laughs> well, you get back to that shortly. You heard about. He'll be asleep by the time I get back to it. Yeah, well, but. I'll, uh, I'll invite you to a TF2 game. Okay. I haven't played TF2 in a long time. Yeah, so I actually do that now with uh, with my two of my boys, and so we'll go in the party and and go in there and attack together. And then, of course, it does the auto balance occasionally. And then I Rose when on the other side over, and I tell them yeah. that they're dead to me. Then, you know. <laughs> and then you make them dead to you. That's right. So, so uh, what do you play in TF2, Christian? What character do I play? Yeah. 
Uh, so I, I like the pyro, number one, um, and then the heavy. And so I, I've got the setups, and I've got multiple setups, depending on what's happening inside the game and the, the play. If I'm with a bunch of noobs that are you know uh, against any capping and just uh, are running around dancing, mm-hmm. then I, like, I'll put on the heavy with the, what is it, the dragon-headed machine gun that spits out the fire <laughs> around you. And I'll just go out and slaughter the dancers, you know, the, the people that clean are, the field. Yeah. Clear the field. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, it's the, the pyro is my choice. And yeah, you know, with the, yeah, the, it, he has the, uh, uh, what is it? The, uh, the, the other guy, the, the, the torch, the, um, yeah, my, my mind is on other things right now, but anyway, yeah. So I'll sh- from afar set people alight. <laughs> you know, yeah it's a lot of fun well remember uh build a man a fire he'll stay warm for a night set a man on fire he'll be alive for the rest of his life yeah there, that's true that's 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 a good t-shirt I'll remember <laughs> that well for those that are just joining in uh what are we doing here this is an ask me anything so microsoft community uh the office hours so if you have any questions around uh microsoft products or services uh, feel free to to ask and there's you've got three MVPs here we we may have some others join us uh, if you'd like to join if you're uh, an MVP or, or expert uh, in, in the in the space then you can join us over on zoom as well um, Elton says hello from Brazil hey, ah, good evening. Elton. greetings in Brazil um, so anyway, uh, let's see, did we have, were we, did we have any homework from this morning's, uh, tied off a few things, but, um, I don't recall any particular homework assignment. I'm looking through, I started to, to, um, capture some notes to make it easier for the summary blog posts. Mm. Um, ah, and that this is actually the second part of our sixth Monday of doing this. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm now, I'm, I'm publishing onto YouTube. Uh, I'm combining both the morning and the evening sessions because we do them at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific um, to hit uh, EMEA as well as APAC and, and the Americas, of course. Uh, and then I'm also providing in a blog post, which you can find out on buckleyplanet.com. And if you look for them, you can see the distinctive, the logo of the community office hours. Uh, and I'm providing an outline with jump links to each of the topics that we discuss. So there's 12 to 15 topics per video. And, uh, and Paul says hello from Atlanta as well. But, well, uh, you know, you go take a look easy. and summarize. And, and uh, so we've had some fun conversations. And when we don't have co- uh, questions coming in from the crowd, so we try to address some of the questions that have been asked openly on the Office 365 community out on Facebook. And even uh, and some that have been asked on the down low. And it's correct. So offline, <laughs> uh, off the Twitters, off of the, uh, off the line. What was that? I watched that, uh, that movie with Vince Vaughn um, where they were the, the interns. Oh, boy. And he kept referring to the internet, you know, uh, on the line. So what we could do is we could go on the line and... <laughs> Give oh, back man. the Twitters. Yeah. All right. So uh, do we have any questions? Any burning questions? Uh, today, the probably this morning, the, the typical of some of the questions that are asked, uh, we were asked uh, what's going on with the latest with uh, getting more than four videos up on Teams for the meetings. And our answer was, we don't know. Three by three is coming. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah. it's forthcoming. It's so I think they're still saying, I've not heard Dude. them change the date. I so gave you the link to that. It's due to the roll in there? May. Yeah. Start rolling in May anyway. You're Sean, that's what okay. you did for me this morning, but what have you done for me lately? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Tough crowd. Yeah. You're so demanding, Christian. Yeah. So, um, yeah, feel free to, uh, in the comments, if you have any questions. And as always, your mileage on some of these dates may vary. We may say it starts rolling in May, but 
you may find that it gets to your tenant depending on uh, whether you're in early adoption or not. You might get it a lot later than that. Yeah, I, I'm amazed by some of that too. Like, uh, so I'm on one of the the fast rings, and mm-hmm. sometimes I hear about stuff, and I other people sharing screenshots. And I'm like, it's not on my tenant. It's not on my tenant. Yeah, F- flashing the uh, new bling, and you're wondering where yours is. I actually made that request at the MVP summit last year where I said, what would be great is you go in and look at the, uh, the M365 roadmap, the product roadmap, and you can go in there filter based on product. And, and I, I would love to be able to see a filter view based on my tenant. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, if they could. Don't tell me about that things happen. that aren't available to me personally. Yeah. yeah you get my hopes up. <laughs> then you're like Bart Simpson. Where's my spy camera? Where's my spy camera? Where's my spy camera? Uh, all right. Um, yeah, so no questions yet. So I'm going to look through some of the other, look, I'm reading through some of the questions. There's a few very lengthy wordy questions. When people are asking about like migration questions, a little tougher to, to answer in this time frame and, Mike could be more of a long drawn out. Oh, here's somebody who's asking a nine part question. I don't think we're going to look at that one. Are they a legal major at a major university? (laughs) Yeah, is that in the education sector? Subpart J of part three of the. That's right. Yeah, it's a. That's that's called hire a consultant. When you have to ask a question in nine parts, Go buy a few hours of somebody's time. Yeah, you're trying to do too much on the cheap, folks. Yeah. Uh, This question must be as simple as I am. (laughs) So someone who has a problem with Office 365, they call it Office 386. There's a problem there. 365, 386, whatever it takes. (laughs) 386, 387, whatever it takes. Um, there, I'm using I'm Windows, 7, Windows 7, Windows <laughs> 7, SP1, and uh, trying to install the login account is a blank window. Hmm. hmm. So not installing on Windows 7, SP1. Um, Try migrating to Windows 10. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how, uh, not a Windows guy, but uh, I, I seem to recall, I, I mean, I know that uh, 10 was a lot uh, smaller payload than uh, install than 8, um, but I think it's also smaller than 7, more compact, runs leaner. Yeah, and for you folks running Windows 7, I'm going to post a link. Um from Tech Radar, and it's called Windows 7 End of Life, Everything You Need to Know About the Death of Windows 7 from January 13th, 2020. Let me paste that into the comments here. I've got three places to add that, so hang on. Windows 7 End of Life starts January 14th, 2020. I like that, End of Life starts. I guess that's when it goes on life support. Does it get a ventilator? Is it one of the select few getting a ventilator? Death death isn't the end, Sean. It is the beginning. It's just the start of the next stage, the next part of the journey. As worm food. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, is it? uh, Zoe asks, uh, how to add guests to my organization as members? Aha. Yes. And add them in Active Directory, That's Azure Active right. Directory, directly to that. Yeah, it just it depends that if you're talking about within Office 365, are you talking about in Teams specifically into SharePoint? But yeah, by default, I'd say yeah, if you're an admin within you know, Active Directory, you can add them through Active Directory, um, or you can have your admin add them to the specific workload like Microsoft Teams. I just okay. added, I just so, added two members to my uh, uh, to my system. I you know just in Office three sixty five in the admin portal, 
um, went in and there's an add user button and I went and added two people today. And for our listeners or viewers, I just posted another link from Microsoft Docs. Add Azure Active Directory B2B collaboration users in Azure Portal. Let me respond to Zoe's comment there. No. It's a real easy thing to do. Yeah. They've made it a lot easier, so. <laughs> yeah, a hell of a lot easier. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to tell who are the guest users in your uh, tenant as well. Oh, here, so something, I, I, I see this uh, comment. There's been a few discussions around the name change. We, we discussed that this morning briefly, didn't we? Impact Was that before the name change? I showed up? It would have been before um, I showed up because I don't okay. recall that. Yeah, so we may not have uh, just another side conversation that's that's going on. And Is this to M365 versus O365? Correct. Yeah, so for those that aren't aware, if you didn't see some of the news, Microsoft is retiring the standalone of the Office 365 brand and renaming everything Microsoft 365. Now, that's, I mean, now I'll cut in here to say this is a sign that most people – have gotten used to and are very comfortable with Office 365, so Microsoft felt the need to move the cheese. Correct. Well, there's a reason for that, though. Right. Other than moving the cheese. Well, no, they 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 put on some discussion about that, and uh, heretofore, all of the various and sundry Office names started off as Office, so they kept that around. But what they started doing as things got revised. Uh, was uh, the, the, these changes were all made as licensing options, SKUs. Let's see, shopkeeping units is what that stands for. Ah, um, good to know. I, you know, I never knew that. Okay. I did not either. Thank you, Hal, for that bit no. of trivia. Well, in any event, so that, that the, 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 the change from uh, Office 2010, 13, 16, etc. to Office 365 was uh, in addition to the various and sundry extras and things that you did get or didn't get, depending on what license you got. The 365 was to include things like uh, Flow and Power Automate and, and some of those features, which while they are Office products, aren't really for the standard Office user. So all of that was licensing based. All of those name changes all dealt with licensing. The change to Microsoft 365 from Office 365 is a branding issue. Mm. So the marketing folks it has had nothing to do that. with the various and sundry shopkeeping units, queues, whatever. It has nothing to do with that. All of the packages, they'll say it all of the packages. It's just the name has changed to protect the innocent. It's one of those uh, <laughs> office, office, bob office, banana, 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 faux office, <laughs> faux office sorts of things. So, so I hate to interrupt, gentlemen, but we've hit it. So we've uh, so Christopher wins the award for this recording for being the first one to question uh, why we're using uh, Microsoft. People are using Zoom. Ding 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 ding. All right. So this is our uh, again the second half of our sixth day of doing this. So that we need a sound effect for that. I know this. Is, oh wait, I do have one. Hang on. You, you got an air horn or something? I do. Wait. Did it go? Come on. There we go. Uh, awesome. <laughs> oh, and, yeah, and I and I have or or the gong. <laughs> <laughs> so either one. Uh, yeah. So Christopher, the the reason that we're using Zoom is because we're live streaming on Facebook. And Teams does not do that. Teams live events do not live stream. Uh, and as I was saying at the very beginning of the recording, I, I wasted a couple hours today trying to go in to, to configure OBS with the live stream keys for Facebook and the camera wasn't working properly. And then, so we're, we're working on that. There are some people who are in the know. I was hoping that uh, one of them would join us this evening uh, from Auckland. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not been a priority for us. It's it, the reason we're live streaming is because, uh, we are trying to reach where the audience is, where all of you are, um, which is out on Facebook for some reason. Um, and then we post the recordings to YouTube. So the goal is to hit the largest audience 
Uh, and uh, so we can always do a webinar and only invite the people that we know and, and find. And yeah, we can do a live meeting and publish that out there. And again, we have to, people are, uh, and I'm talking too long about this, but we've just found that when we do that and we just provide an open link to a webinar, we get far fewer people that join the webinar than will watch a live stream. So that's why. Anyway. All right. So back into it. Sorry to interrupt the, the story time. <laughs> uh, like I said, it's our 12th time recording doing, doing this. And uh, every time and somebody mentions that, and we're, we're well aware of that. So uh, I'm not, Hopefully I'm not beating up on anybody, but all right. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but as far as the, the, you know, the impact of the branding change around the change from 365 to, to Microsoft 365, I mean, part of it in the complaint, there was an MVP call and they were talking about the name change. And, and I'm just like, really, this is what we're talking about. I said, look, I, I understand people. It's, it's confusing to some clients especially for consultants out there to try and, uh, you know, to understand, especially with some of the licensing, underlying licensing changes, where there are some impacts, where things that were like a pro version is now the standard version, and there's a new pro version, but you were paying for the pro version, which is now the standard version, not the, now the new pro version. All those things get very confusing. My response yeah. to all that is that this is like the, what, the 20th time, 50th time Microsoft has done something like this. So why are we wasting our time talking about it? And you know? it isn't as bad as some of them have done, like Outlook yeah. and Outlook Express. Oh my. Uh, yeah. Microsoft, the company that gave you COM, but before COM, we had OLE. Before that, we had DDE. But before yeah. that, it's like, ugh. They actually, Pun, they made fun of themselves at TechEd, I want to say, 999, which was down in uh, Dallas. And they crowded everybody into the, uh, I want to say, the, the Dallas Convention Center or whatever stadium there. And one of the first talks of the day was they rolled a video that was produced by Microsoft. It was like 15 minutes long about this DDE to OLE to COM conversion and made it was total making fun of themselves and all the branding changes that went with that it was hilarious i wish i could, i tried to find a copy of that somewhere on online i have not found a copy online so if anybody has a link to that please send it to me if you happen to be a tech ed 99 or whichever one was in dallas close to that year and happen to see it the the two people out there maybe besides me <laughs> Uh, yeah, good times. That, that's, that's the flavor of life. It's the name changes. It's the branding changes that just keeps us guessing, keeps it, uh, keeps it interesting, keeps a lot of cons consultants in business. So, um, so here's the question I want to jump past. Uh, so Elton asked the question with a single credential, can I manage multiple tenants just like in Azure? Um, a guest account can be put in the tenant administrator role, can't it? That I'm not sure. Uh, there was just, I just I, saw him looking. There was I believe I a, did that with one of my accounts in one of my other tenants. And I put it in the admin role. I could have sworn that there was this similar question posted um, somewhere here in the uh, Office 365 community on Facebook. Um, I'm looking through to see if I can find it. I'm going to try and do it right now. See, that's what, this is where you get your money's worth. People We're we're, uh, in real time going to go take a look and see if we can solve that. See what the answer actually is. Let's see admin. I see another question that just got posted. Uh, let me refresh that. Where did I just see that question? Let's see. 
I see April just joined in watching. Right. April, I just sent you a link to join the panel if you'd like to join us. Unless she's shy. Oh, yeah. And you say walk. walk. <laughs> no, I just, uh, my, my wife is, um, uh, so works for Pottery Barn as a visual designer. So she's got all this pottery barn stuff in the garage and throughout the house and she's purging getting ready for spring got to buy a bunch of new stuff like apparently uh and uh we're just uh in, in the community here in our neighborhood she's giving stuff away so she stuck the dogs down and shut the door in the basement so that uh you know and if anybody comes to the door of course they're going to hear it and and freak out so i just invited an account from uh, a Microsoft 365 business user tenant that I've got to my E5 and put them in the global admin role. So yes, it is possible. Okay. Sent myself the link. I'm now going to the link, reviewing my permissions saying yes to the permissions, hang tight, we give you access to Bitstream Foundry LLC. And just like that, I'm a global admin. Okay. He there says, you go. He says thanks. You're welcome. Awesome. These are good things for us to know too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there was a, I was look. I didn't see where it was. I, it may have been I was I was looking at the community over on. Uh, I was reading through the today some stuff out on uh, Microsoft Tech Community. Also reading some stuff out on LinkedIn in the in the groups, and so it may have been happened over there. But uh, some of the folks were looking at. Um, I think it was a similar question. Uh, and but their question they were really d digging into was some of the differences between. Um, like a, a like an admin role versus like a CSP MSP mm -hmm. type role, and trying to understand what's out there. So, yeah, but I didn't find it. So, hey, I'm glad you were able to answer that. Yeah, CSP is more a, a designation for partners and whatnot. I right. suspect it comes with certain roles, but you know, the global admin role is more of a security group tenant role. Right. Well, I know that Microsoft, this has been one of the complaints about uh, Office 365 in general is that, you know, from the CSP or MSP, CSP, you can still have multiple customers that you're providing services to. Um, CSP is, you know, whether they purchase their licenses through you or not, I'm not talking about partner of record stuff, but managing doing certain tasks and could be uh, you know, authorized, you know, administrator on those systems. And one of the criticisms has been, you know, Microsoft, you need to make it easier for those of us that need to manage multiple tenants. You make it very painful. And so they've been working on some capability. I think there's still a lot to do there, of course. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, and CSP for you folks who might be wondering, I believe is cloud service partner, right? Right. And MSP is managed service provider. Um, so generally, you have like an MSP might be cloud service provider. Yeah, yeah. MSP might be um, uh, that you you go to a vendor and they provide you with everything that's within the the you know, the suite Office three sixty five or now Microsoft three sixty five. But they may also have, especially a lot of MSPs, they may specialize in HR, and so they've got their own apps and tools and solutions built, or there have been, uh, you know, project management based. Uh, uh, so you could actually get Office 365 and 
before prior to project online you could get like a hosted version of of microsoft project or project server and have it all as one bundled solution and go to one vendor for all those pieces as well as help with custom development um, and i know there was a real push for even independence to go and become and kind of uh, uh, you know market themselves as uh, as CSPs, uh, and even if you're working with a single client, um, yeah, but, but yeah. you wouldn't get that tier one designation. Yeah. Uh, so there's a question. Kevin had asked a question. I saw this one kind of come through as uh, as well, um, asking, "Is there how to take a team from private to public without doing it all by hand?" And I know that you can take something from um, private to public. I can't remember where we landed. If you can do that the other way around, I don't I'm think so. Familiar with changing the status or visibility, access. I'm a great Teams consumer. I'm not much of a Teams admin. I'm not a team player. <laughs> Uh, I was, uh, I was about to go there. <laughs> I beat you to it. Uh, I will flog myself, Christian. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, any other questions you guys have uh, run to that we, uh, or if you want to restate any, any great answers we had from this morning. Do you even remember the morning? I'm having trouble with that. No. I guess I'm sundowning in my old age. <laughs> I just saw, I, this is completely unrelated, but talking about failed memory, I just, uh, I, I saw something uh, earlier today uh, during lunch. I was watching something, one of those tubes on you mm -hmm. uh, uh, that uh, Malcolm in the middle, huge fan of that show. But uh uh, Frankie, uh, what is it? Um, Munoz. M Munoz. Munoz, uh, yeah. He was in an accident and he has no memory of acting in the show. What? Yeah. Wow. Is That's that a amazing? pretty significant excision of memory. Yeah. Yeah. So he lost like a, a decade of his memory. So, I mean, he's doing, doing fine. He's married and has business. I, I'm not sure if it happened. He was, uh, you know, uh, driving, uh, uh, driving cars was, uh, you know, racing, uh, there for a while. If he was in an accident or something or had some other health issue, I don't, I don't know. I didn't, didn't get into the detail of that, but just thought it was incredible that he lost that. So wow. anyway, so we have no excuses, <laughs> <laughs> I guess is my point. None that we can claim at least that's that dramatic. Yeah. Brian Cranston also in Malcolm in the Middle. That was an amazing show. We love love that show. It's for me. It's like Seinfeld. You know, I can go back and watch Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, yeah. All right. Let me see if there's any other questions. Again, if you have any questions you'd like us to address, oh, there are there there are a couple things. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Oh, I, I, Keith asked a question. I'm not sure if we'll answer here, but uh, might look into it. it. Says I took a training for Office 365 admins a few months back, and there was a recommendation mentioned that global admins use a login name of name at tenantname dot on Microsoft dot com as opposed to name at domain name dot com in a hybrid environment. What's the reason behind that? If there actually is any, have you guys heard that? I've not heard that recommendation no, now. I don't know why, other than if you want to um, uh, just make it clear only your admins have that. I mean, if it's uh, uh, just to, to make it clear the organization uh, of you know who has access to what, but I don't understand why that would make any difference. Yeah. About the only thing I could see is if there was some form of a DNS issue. You know, yeah, I'm thinking the same thing now. And uh, that would prevent you from getting in as 
so and so at domain, whereas so and so at on at on Microsoft.com. Of course, you still go through DNS to get that, but if you screwed up the domain, or if they screwed up the domain, or something screwed up the domain, that would at least get you back in to maybe fix it. Yeah, I, I can also see that factoring into authentication as well with ADFS if you're doing that yeah. sort of. Uh, uh, sign in that would route you back to an organization or pass through authentication with AD where you yeah. pass back through to the DCs that might be on premises or something. Yeah. But beyond that, I'm, yeah, I don't have any particular thoughts or answers on that. Would be interested in the rationale for it though. Yeah, if there's uh, Keith, if you can share with us, you know, like you know where where the training was or who it was through. I mean, that's the kind of thing that we'd love to go follow up on and maybe yeah, learn something. <laughs> grab, grab a link, yeah, and, absolutely, and yeah. something on that too. I mean, there's a lot of flavors of hybrid too. So, um, you know, get, getting kind of more detail around that that response, but yeah. yeah. Uh, see, Muhammad says, is it necessary to have all domains verified on Office 365 to migrate users from Exchange to Office 365 if users have secondary SMTP of more than one domain? Did you follow that one? Mm. Not secondary, secondary SMTP. For multiple accounts, or what? What's the particular situation, Mohammed? If you happen to have that, yeah. If you can provide a little more detail, because I mean, you can specify any number of SMT endpoints in Exchange. While we're waiting to see if he clarifies something on that, um, Ali asks. Uh, multi-factor authentications on P1, do you think it's really required on accounts other than global admins? Well, how prone is your business to assault? What's your attack surface and what are you trying to protect? I mean, MFA, it comes down to whether or not you feel that much security is warranted and won't be a user impediment or not. I mean, I put MFA on my Amazon account. I definitely do on my yeah. bank accounts. Yeah, um, likewise. So MFA is a good thing. It's not a bad thing, but the only time it might be prohibitive again is that uh, cost of uh, user learning and adjustment and whether or not it proves an impediment to actually getting business done. You guys have any other thoughts on that? Not really. No, same as you. I'm I'm using it more and more. I, honestly, I I don't look at it as so much as a as a hassle. It depends on what it is. All the financial you know financial institutions, my bank, credit cards, uh, and major accounts. Yeah. So let's put it this way: Blizzard games. If you got a Warcraft account, the Blizzard Authenticator typically uses MFA, and there's a Blizzard Authentication app. So people protect their virtual assets with MFA, not just physical assets. It all depends on what something's worth to you and how high you want to make the bar on security. Yeah. All he says, you know, user learning and adjustment is his sticking point. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the issue. It's uh, you know, they're the, you know, you can put a lot of rules, a lot of controls in place, make things very secure. If the, you have to balance that with whether uh, that is uh stopping people from using the platform exactly and and balance those things i mean you that's part of the governance strategies to go in and look at that user experience and look at what are the requirements of your business is is it difficult for people to get in there well if, if you're having multiple breaches um intellectual property loss a bunch of other things that are that are happening in the business you're going to be like, suck it up people, you know, um, and it, you just may need to enhance your training and, and have constant refreshers and reminders, build a, like a marketing campaign for those activities of why you're doing it, why it's important. Um, 
but it, you know that is essential this day and age it's it's becoming more and more essential to have that in place because you can bet if you are hacked one of the very first question people are going to be playing in the aftermath is what could you have done to make it more difficult for to prevent this sort of activity in the first place if you have mfa available to you i, I wouldn't actually make i wouldn't Having come from a disaster recovery background, I've played this game before. I don't make disaster recovery decisions. I will advise people on what they can do in different situations. The decisions need to come from the people who are going to be impacted the greatest and pay the costs for these things. Uh, we shouldn't be making them just because we have the technical keys of the kingdom. We should be making the offer uh, to our business partners and folks to make that decision and let them know what's available to them. Um, but if you are in a position of making that decision for your organization, uh, it might not hurt to survey your users and ask them how they feel about it um, and explain what that would bring to the table in terms of security as well as what the problem might be. Because there are different ways of doing MFA as well. Um, you know, there are authenticator apps, there's the simple text to the cell phone. Um, it depends on how you implement it and different ways of implementing it come with different technical challenges. So, you know, survey folks, know what your options are, present them and let them make informed decisions. And we've got a couple uh, follow-up uh, posts here, Keith, uh, back to Mohammed's question. Um, and I'll go back and uh, again, that um, uh, to have the all the domains verified in Office 365 to migrate users from Exchange to Office 365 with the secondary SMTP. So Keith said, I think Mohammed means like for example, at Microsoft.com is the primary SMTP, but then there's other addresses on the same mailbox for at Outlook and and Hotmail, for example. So you know, so some other examples would be you know through company acquisitions. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, part of that's going to be policy driven, but I mean, if, if you're talking about different SMTP servers in different domains, it kind of comes down to what your authoritative um, domain is for your particular, particular email account um, and what people typically route email through for that account. I mean, there are different factors that weigh into that. Yeah, so I mean, I, I look on my little account, so I have three different domains you know, that I own and that are all managed through that, that account, but I have a couple different people. Um, some of my contractors that I use on a regular basis that I've given, uh, you know, um, boxes and some licenses to um, on each of those three different accounts and all roll up to that one location, so. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not migrating. I'm, so I'm not doing that other additional piece of that. Yeah, some of it comes down to, I mean, there are different concerns with this too. The security is another one. Um, some SMTP servers, most SMTP servers, if they're publicly exposed, are going to require authentication. So, you know, is it publicly exposed or not? Um, that's a big question. And if it is, you're going to require authentication. You may choose to send private mail through one SMTP server that's uh, kept privately and uh, accepts more anonymous relays on secure IP ranges and things like that. You know, that that's where security factors into it, but there are different ways you could, um, you can weigh things and factor that into the ultimate decision making process. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, here's another one. I don't know that we're going to be able to help, but just kind of do the, mm. uh, but, uh, Mohammed also says, why did Microsoft change pro plus to, uh, Microsoft apps for enterprise? You ever wonder. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Too many bodies were buried in the closet and people got access to it, so they moved them. I don't know. No, no. I think that they were thinking things were running a little too smoothly in the community. So we need to every once in a while just, you know, shake it's, the It's like that bingo ball with the numbers. You got to shake it up, mix yeah. it up. 
mix it up, see what happens, see who freaks out. You know, well, those, those, uh, that, that look, look how bright red and angry that MVP is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not polling uh, well, change things. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> You can almost see the people doing it right now. Yeah. But honestly, I mean, again, we had this 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 discussion around the O three six five to M three six five and and there's some people that were just uh uh taking it a little too personally um in, in you know expressing angst about that and yeah. And I'm just like, really, this is what we're 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 like I, I and, and I think Sean, you were on the call. Actually, I don't, were both of you on the MVP call? Yeah. And, I, and I'm just like, is, is this what we're talking about, people? Like, I got stuff to do, and so I dropped off. And so then, much question, a uh, questionably righteous indignation. It's almost yeah. kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just like, how no. dare you? <laughs> I don't, I don't. How dare you, sir? Uh, yeah. I remember having a similar indig- indignant. You know, conversation be angry at the changes back in 2007 2008 2008 when it was during the uh mms to office 365 when the branding was announced was released and people were uh curdled at that (laughs) process just like it's a good word for it it's fine yeah uh yeah you're starting to harsh my mellow <laughs> uh, all right any other questions that we can answer or make jokes about or something <laughs> yeah there's nothing we won't take a crack of making fun of uh, yeah and i see and heather joined she probably already left by now though but Heather. Uh, Heather Newman. Oh, great. Heather Newman invited me to one of the greatest Facebook groups in existence these days. Marketing one? No. Oh. No, the uh, social distancing fashion show. (laughs) It is incredible. It is a wonderful group. People Uh, like doing all sorts of things. I mean, they're not afraid to be risque and, you know, it's everything from clothes to makeup. Uh, I watched one this morning with a, a woman who was <laughs> sitting at a video camera and clearly there was somebody who had man hands behind her who was acting as her hands and she was putting her makeup on. Oh, it was her husband doing that, right? With the, like the kid around her. Yeah, I saw that one. That was fantastic. I mean, some of that stuff is just worth its weight in gold and it helps keep people uh i guess motivated and a little lighter hearted during this you know covid mess that we've got going on yeah sean what what covid mess? what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> don't don't go there please don't yeah. you told me about this what's what's going on <sighs> what is it with this newfangled stuff yeah. i don't get i don't keep up with what they're <laughs> doing so yeah uh, COVID, co-ed, what are you talking about? Yep. Uh, all right. Yep. COVID, it's not an opportunity for video partnering. Uh, yeah, Keith was saying, says, we've got a ton of open mic groups around us for quarantine comedy and quarantine music. Haven't seen oh, yeah. fashion shows. Yeah, it's a good good idea. I, you know, I, I've actually really liked. I mean, you, as you guys both know, I've I've done several posts and I've done some live streams where I've gone through my music collection and stuff. Yeah, and, uh, that's good stuff. Uh, and, and I'd almost like to do that kind of a group setting and go through and with people and and uh, and share like the actual the, the vinyl and let, talk about. That would be a riot. It. It'd be it'd be a lot of fun to go and do. So yeah, I have been enjoying quarantine. Uh, quarantine music show. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been enjoying that. So several people are doing, uh, was, uh, uh, so Seb Matthews had, uh, was sharing some of the, his, 
uh, the formative years, the albums that shaped his music taste. I was seeing that. Yeah, that was great. Uh, so I was, I, I commented on one. So we had, uh, uh, I don't know the album, was it by uh, ELO? And I went and I'm listening to it. I'm like, man, this one, that came out in 77, 78, 79, when ELO was really big. And that's all the music that I would roller skate to as a kid. So <laughs> yeah, I remember it. funny. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. TJ asks, um, what is the impact of COVID-19 on Microsoft cloud services? So, well, there's been an, an impact. And one of the things that Microsoft came out with like two weeks ago when they did the announcement, they basically said that they were um, slowing down, delaying some new features being released because they were moving resources over to um, deal with the fact that they had, I don't know what the latest numbers are, but you know, two, three weeks ago, it was like an 800% increase. Yeah, in massive uptick. Usage. And so, and then they were had you know, performance you know, issues around that with their s services, with their systems. And so they, they kind of moved people over to address those issues. And they also provided some throttling capabilities like throughout uh, the, the workloads. Right. Um, so yeah, there's definitely been an impact because of that. Um, I've not seen an update on that to know whether some of the throttling is still out there, I'm assuming. Still there. Yeah, you can't bring that much extra capacity online overnight. Um, so I'm sure they're phasing it in like they typically do. They're just accelerating the schedule. As they do that, they can relax some of the throttle points. But um, yeah, massive uptick. Definitely. A lot of people figuring out that they can in some way, if not completely, work online in a virtual sense these days. Yeah. So there's some more comments from people that need to scroll up. Hey, Ryan. Yeah, we've, we've uh, addressed that, the Zoom issue. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's all about live streaming. So, um, yeah, and, and why and, – and so people have asked a, a few times, like, you know, it, well, does Microsoft – are they looking at providing live streaming of Teams meetings and team live events um, through the streaming services? And um, my understanding is that, yeah, they've talked about it, that they, they're where they want to do it. It's just real, there's no date on it. It's, it's not on the existing roadmap. They know that they're eventually going to offer something around that. But it, you have to look at the main difference. I, I, I mean, it's an apples versus oranges uh, you know, comparison of uh, Teams to Zoom. Um, yeah where Teams does so much more, but it's an enterprise application. So the primary consumers and users of it are within the enterprise. So how does Zoom compete within the enterprise? Hi. How does, Hi. How do they My lovely. The they, they really, they don't compete in the enterprise in the same way. They don't have all that other capability. But for what we're doing, trying to provide an anonymous stream out to Facebook teams doesn't do that today. Yeah. Mm. And it's yes. uh, not, not easily yes. enough for a Christian to grok. No, not, not yet. So yet. yeah, I failed at it today. I was just saying Heather that uh, I know that like uh, Daryl Webster has done a bunch of stuff and he's, he's demoed the stuff I need to yeah. tap into his, uh, his brain and figure out how to set it up. It depends on the time of day. It depends on your Wi-Fi. Honestly, like, I mean, I, I'm doing the Zoom to Facebook thing, and sometimes it's like, wham, and it connects, and other times it's like, nope. Yeah. And there's, like, honestly, no rhyme or reason to it. Well, you know? But the problem is, though, like, so I went in and was trying to set up OBS. So you need to go set up the, scene, yeah, yeah. the streams <laughs> yep. uh, or the scenes for it. And uh, so I was – it was not – when I tried to connect – uh, through to for for teams and connect it so i've been able to live stream with obs and straight to my desktop over yep. on facebook but there was something that's off with teams it was not recognized across the streams camera. i'm telling you you cross yeah. the streams <laughs> that's, that's exactly what you know, yeah yeah so. well i mean it's all kinds of stuff about like what are you trying to do? Are you building a community? How many, what's the frequency of your events? Where are you trying to host them? 
are you using encoder? Or are you not? Is it a broadcast one to out? Is it you and a bunch of people that you want to chat? I mean, you guys know. All is that it stuff. Thursday? What's yeah. the favorite? Yeah, thing? Totally. Like, not even that. I is want it, to wear a wig. You know, and, and like, Ryan, the second half of your comments is that wig. <laughs> you're talking about external web. I got a wig on. External yeah. web conferencing. Yeah, Zoom is the dominant platform today. I mean, mm-hmm. a, a year ago they weren't. It, go Go to Meeting was still you know, kind of the bigger player out in the space. I think the coronavirus has really launched them into that. And I'll, uh, I would argue that Teams is not in that space. They're just recently with the live events, Microsoft has not fully even entered that space properly. I mean, they kind of did that when they bought um, Placeware. We're going all the way back to 2006, 2007. Wow, yeah. Um, and had the old live meeting platform when they tried to play in that space. Some but of our listeners were in it, diapers, Christian. Well, they, they tried <laughs> to shape that into Placeware was the was the uh, best user experience of the comparative platforms. Like WebEx was the bigger player, but expensive right. and and rudimentary. Placeware um, was just a was a great product. But anyway, um, but they but Microsoft they bought that ex- extranet solution external mm-hmm. collaboration solution, and then brought it into this enterprise solution. Then they bloated it and broke it, and we could, that's a different conversation. <laughs> they Microsoft it. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but anyway. Um, you ever see that video, the evolving video, if Microsoft had made the iPod? Yeah. The packaging, yeah. how it evolved. You know, that was a Microsoft video. Was it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> another, it was done another by Another shot of them taking care of themselves. Here, let me, I'll go find that. Okay. Heather, why don't you, add. Heather, what's what's latest in your world? Like, what kind of questions have you been hearing from uh, folks out in the community that you've been talking to? Oh goodness, um, I think it, it's all about you know uh, what should we use uh, for all of these virtual events and meetings, um, and you know it depends. It depends on if it's somebody who is dealing on the personal level, they're just like dealing with their children and homeschooling. Like that's like a lot of the conversations with my friends that are like, (gasps) ah, Um, and then sort of on the business level, it's more hmm, long-term what's our strategy going to be and how are we going to, you know, sustain our user groups or whatever. And Christian, you and I have been on some of that kind of stuff uh, with our MVP hats on and sort of just trying to figure out what the future is going to look like. And I think that's, really exciting. Um, I I find that the thing is, is that people may have rolled out Office 365. They've had Exchange for a while. They've used SharePoint forever, but they may or may not have used Teams. And the thing is, is they may have figured out how to use Teams for chat and setting up a meeting, but not a whole lot else. And so the, the like imposter syndrome and uh, like the smoke and mirrors of like, do you actually know how to use this? (laughs) is really coming out and it's good in a way because it's like well wait a minute let's talk about this and let's figure out what what are the teams you need what are the channels you need how 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 can you use this to truly collaborate and not have it just be like a big sprawl like SharePoint was back in the day when we had team sites that's dating me too but you know what I mean so I feel like those conversations are happening and that's really exciting um, and it is a product. Teams is a product that can scale. You know, um, it's just that people, I think, pretend a little bit that they know how to use it when they actually don't. And I think I just wish people would stop pretending. Just be like, I don't know how to use this. Explain it to me. Let's figure it out. And like, that's the conversation I love having instead of, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it, another person says, oh, yeah, yeah to me. I just am like, okay, well, tell me how to do it. And they're like, oh, well, uh, and I'm like, okay, so let's stop that conversation talk about your use cases, talk about the business problems you're solving, look at teams and also look at the teams developer platform and our, and also power platform and look at all, like, what can we do to automate that? Like we had a situation where we're automating a help desk for somebody and it's like, okay, well, how do we use the platform to do that? Well, okay, let's give them an email. Okay. Well, sure. Let's give them a support email, but what happens to that email? Well, let's give it, give the, the email address to the teams. Okay, great. What happens when it comes to the teams? Well, let's turn on a flow or power automate and have it go and reroute into, you know, the SharePoint site where we can triage the list and everybody can see, you know what I mean? It's like that kind of stuff. It's like, that's possible and it doesn't have to be that hard, but that's a business use case. That's one, but that 
think about that replicating out to all kinds of different kinds of business processes, right? Yeah, you got to understand your end-to-end -end solution or what you need yeah. or. Right. You know, but that requires talking and saying, we've got a problem. Let's figure out if I got a problem, you all solve it and let's solve it together. You know, it's not just IT's problem. It's everybody's problem. You know, when you're trying to automate something and like, mm -hmm. that's fun. I think it's fun. Not everybody mm -hmm. thinks it's fun. So. You're know. not so one of the people they keep in the server closet and throw food under the door every now and then, too. <laughs> no. Don't throw it under the door. They slide it gently. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. 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 Uh, TJ also asked a question we addressed earlier about uh, increasing the number of Microsoft Teams participants on a video call. Yeah, I mean, the, we're, we're hearing all the same. There's no other insider info within the MVP pool that we're, we're what, all hearing. What's the, what's the number right now? H1, everybody? 2020. Yeah. No, no. Uh, what's oh, the no. number? Oh, the number, uh, I, I don't know. You know, whether it's nine or 12, or whatever, but it's more than four. Oh, you mean the Brady Bunch look? Yeah, the Brady Bunch. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think it's gonna be nine, three by three. Three by uh, three is what I've heard. Yeah. Yep. But uh, yeah, and what we, we had talked about earlier was uh, it may be one of the features that has been kind of uh, you know, deprioritized given all of the other performance, uh, you know, focus on uh, the, the massive increase in usage of Microsoft services and Teams. So, um, yeah. and then if you didn't see it, so I did, um, I did create, or I did share- Four to nine. Packaging. They're increasing the number from four to nine. Four to nine. Yeah. It's and that's great. from roadmap.office.com. I just did a search on Teams video. Mm -hmm. It's the second hit. Yeah. Yeah. And I will bring out as well as, and Ryan mentioned it, Microsoft did make the iPod. It's called the Zoom. Yeah. I have one too. Multiple, multiple. I've got the, this was the one I wanted. I wanted, and it's great. Susan Lennon gave me this mint. It's the brown Zoom. <gasps> oh. Yeah, you're so special. A little green around it. I just love it. And it's just, it's perfect. What's really funny too, is it has on it maybe four songs. So this was a, this is a gen one or gen two. Uh, all it could hold was like five. Four songs. <laughs> it's like four. My yeah. five favorite yeah. songs of all time. No, what's funny is that it had like four songs on it and a podcast from Todd Clint. Oh, oh, wow, what is it? I'm like, you can't say that in public. You're going to swell his head, man. No, no, I said I deleted it instantly. Come on. <laughs> wow. Came pre installed, so, right? It's still on there, but I, I don't know what it is. I, it's, you know, whatever. Todd, mm -hmm. pretend you didn't hear that, please. That's, that's funny. I love it. Well, anyway, hey, everybody, we're, we're at time now. So uh, oh, thanks oh. a lot for participating. Heather, thanks for joining at the end. Sean, yeah, and Heather. Yeah, hi. And so uh, yeah, you're right. welcome to join every time. It's always at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific. I have had meetings both the times from the last bit. So this was the first time I was like, oh my gosh, I think they're on. You're okay. talking to the hand, Heather. Okay. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Rude. Just join us. But so uh, yeah, we'll, be, we'll be back. And I should have uh, everything up on YouTube. So the re recording for both sessions as well as a link list with all of the topics that we cover. So it's great about cool. that. You could go over to buckleyplanet.com and just, you can see one of the office oh. hours blog posts for the last five. So this will be. Yeah. You've been doing a nice job summarizing those Christian. It, it takes a while to go through two hours of video and. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I applaud your effort. Um, but providing those out there so you could go and, and jump to exactly to the conversation uh, or you can listen to, now, uh, all 12 hours of wow. those videos. So that's- What are you using for transcription these days? Uh, I don't do the transcription. You're on your own for that. Oh, okay. So if you need an alternative to waterboarding, 12 hours of these videos are available. <laughs> okay. I, I post it all, uh, Heather, I post everything to YouTube. And so I'll go through ah. finding the links. Uh, and I, so I use the transcription with in, inside of YouTube for that. So. Oh, cool. Right on. All right. You do. All right. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Yeah. And TJ, that's why you have to do the, like, the earlier one. So it, you know, it happened at 8 a.m. Pacific instead of the, you know, the 6 p.m. Pacific. So yeah. Yeah. But thanks for joining TJ and everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. What a great hey, way to start your morning. 
listening to this. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. See ya. Hey, how?